Well, so let's start. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for participating at our webinar. It's all about digital transformation. The title of our webinar today is Go Digital, Go Change, Understand and Organize. Well, digital transformation, do we have to explain what's behind digital transformation? We believe yes, because it's not clearly defined. It's more or less a buzzword. And if you ask different people, you get different answers. That's what we have done. We did a survey with companies in Estonia, in the Czech Republic, and in Germany, and developed case studies to digital transformation. So what we would like to do today, we would like to give you our understanding based on uh, the surveys from companies in different countries, our understanding of digital transformation. And what is the main takeaway of digital transformation? If we are speaking about we, I'm thinking about the three partner universities. The new University of Technology, we have Senka today with us. She's doing part three. In Tafom Tatu University, we have Virgo and Veronica, and they are doing the other parts. And it, of course, it's me, Weiner, from the University of Applied Sciences in Bielefeld. We promised you to learn within 30 minutes about digital transformation. Well, it's not a one-way street. You could ask questions by using the chat room, and we are we are doing after 30 minutes a Q&A session about that. Or just give your comments in the chat room. That would be very nice. Well, thanks a lot for participating. So let's start with my part. and. It's about digital making business quicker and global. Well, if you are thinking, what does digital transformation makes with you, with you as an individual? Probably it changes your behavior. It changes your way of thinking. It changes definitely the way you are transacting. In former times, you have been shopping in the city. Probably now you are using a platform. So you are using, you are doing peer-to-peer -peer business. Which means if the individual as the smallest unit of the society is changing, the organizations which are organizing your life have to change as well. Because what our organizations are doing, they are binding the individual in processes to optimize the outcome. It could be a business process, it could be an administration process, or it could be a university. What we, what we saw in the past years, we saw a general trend from, from traditional corporate business to peer-to-peer -peer business. Well, we saw an upcoming of the peer-to-peer -peer platforms. If I'm speaking about the platform economy, I'm speaking about the Amazons, Flickbuses, or Uber, or Airbnb of the world. And probably, the, so they kicked out the intermediary, they kicked out the middleman, and probably they are much more efficient than traditional corporate businesses in certain sectors, of course. And what we see, what we might see in the future, that even we no more need the platform, we could do it within the network on a peer-to-peer -peer basis by using a distributed ledger or what we call a blockchain application. Well, if we go to the traditional businesses, Traditional organizations of corporate business are linear organized, meaning you have on the left-hand side, you are starting in T0, buying input material. Then you have in the middle the core production process in the company with the management, with hierarchy, with different supply functions like HR, finance, procurement, or marketing. 
and then after producing the products you are selling them in the market as an output and the cu customer to the customers traditional organized business are risk taker they have all the risks all the assets on the balance sheets they have the people employed they ha they are the owner of the machines that's totally different to the peer to peer business the peer to peer business are spreading the risk to the different network peers they are thinking just see in the traditional organization the customer comes at last in the peer to peer business it's different they are thinking about the customer first that's what we call design thinking they are the processes are scalable they they could easily scale up if there's more demand or scale down the processes these processes are no long term planning they are much more flexible and agile and that's exactly the these are the common features of the peer to peer business design thinking thinking about the customer or the purpose of of the business first they are scalable they have zero marginal costs high fixed costs of course they are using a lot of technology but very low variable costs they are agile they are open source and collaborative within their network partners it's not a closed shop like a family business they are much more open and well as they are more efficient they are using less natural resources that that implies that they are more sustainable thinking about the climate change we need much more sustainability within the economic system and it might be that the peer to peer business is a solution for that well now we have to understand if that's the future how do we get from the traditional business to the peer to peer business how could we reorganize and what do we have to do and that's exactly what virgo will tell you later on virgo please be so kind to take over Okay, thanks, Rainer. Uh, well, as Rainer discussed so far, digital transformation opens up quite many new uh, interesting opportunities for, for businesses. Uh, but the bit bad news is that it's not that easy. You have to make a lot of changes to your organization to get maximal benefits out of it. Uh, you just cannot buy a technology or acquire it uh, or develop yourself and just start enjoying the benefits but you have to change your organization quite a bit and uh, that is what my presentation will focus on okay, okay. Uh, so going digital uh, requires full organization a full transformation of organization and I would like to focus on four building blocks here namely strategy structure processes and systems and uh, culture uh, all of these elements of course are linked to each other and uh, influence each other uh, so if you change one of them you need to change uh, all other three as well and also the digital influences all of these four and vice versa all these four elements uh, influence digital opportunities that you have or don't have so yeah so let's look at them uh, in more detail one by one so first off strategy uh, strategy guides the organization about um, the scope of the business uh, first of all uh, where do we do uh, business where do we compete and secondly, how do we compete? Meaning, uh, for example, are we a low-cost producer and uh, trying to compete on lower prices? Or are we differentiating somehow and uh, creating additional value for customer, which would allow us to charge uh, higher prices? 
and thus increase our profitability. So these are basically the high level choices. So how does the uh, digital transformation fit in? Uh, we could view uh, digital transformation or digital capability as uh, one of the new capabilities that the organization has or does not have. Uh, the capabilities are sort of things that allow you to do certain things or, or not allow them to do. Uh, so, for example, if uh, your organization is digitally uh, good and your competitors are not, that means that you might have so certain uh, opportunities to get competitive edge over your competitors. And, of course, vice versa. If your competitors do have the capabilities and you don't, then uh, the, your competitors might have upper hand. So some of these capabilities or digital opportunities that are the things that uh, Reiner already discussed. But just to add a few more here, uh, is about uh, data. So digital is a lot about uh, data. So if you have uh, better data, more you could have more qualitative uh, decisions, higher quality decisions. So compared to more gut feeling uh, decisions that uh, companies might have uh, today. Also, since the digital allows faster processing of data and also higher volume of uh, data, you will have, in addition to higher quality, also more faster decisions. You also might have uh, certain new data sources, uh, which might help you discover certain new opportunities for, for your business. Uh, so that's about the uh, strategy. So secondly, uh, digital, uh, how digital capability is linked to the culture. Uh, but by and large, culture is uh, about the mindset and values of, uh, of your organization. In order to make the digital really pay off, uh, you need really to have customer centricity. That's also what, uh, what Reiner mentioned in, in his presentation that you really have to put the customer first and not focus that much on your sort of internal things, like internal processes or what you what you do, but what really the customer wants. Uh, you need to focus on innovation and growth. Uh, in order to do that, uh, the mindset of your employees uh, needs to be more flexible. Uh, your, your organization should be ready for experimentation. Well, that's basically what innovation is. You need to experiment. Uh, and that also means that your organization needs to accept failures, which might be a problem here in Europe generally, but that's what uh, we need to improve on. Um, because inevitably, some of your innovation, innovative uh, efforts will fail. I mean, that's what we know. Innovation is a risky process, so and that risk there is. Um, your incentive systems need to support uh, this culture, of course. So, for example, if the organizational performance systems or pay for performance is really linked to short term profits, that uh, might deter the failures and the experimentation processes of projects, so innovation might be hampered. So incentive systems might be changed a bit. And of course, you need to train uh, your people so that they can really use the technologies. Uh, one of the key difficulties here might be middle managers, uh, because the research has shown that uh, the top managers and the employees actually accept the new digital technologies even easier than your middle managers do. Uh, and well, the reason could be that uh, middle managers might have most to lose. I mean, they have their empires right now, and this could change uh, throughout the digital transformation. Okay, but uh, moving on to processes and systems. Well, the most obvious change, of course, is uh, that the manual work might be automated. Uh, so you need to change your processes in that sense. Uh, a little less obvious, but a nice side effect of your redesigning efforts is that you most likely will find and can el eliminate some non-value-adding steps uh, in your processes. 
So that's sort of uh, additional value to go through. Incentive systems we already touched upon a bit, but uh, to add to the previous discussion, you you can make the performance pay more granular uh, and more related to specific employees. So it might be viewed as more fair. So you can actually measure the performance of each individual employee a bit better. Also, some other systems are influenced. It's just, for example, the control systems. You can make uh, the systems more uh, faster, more detailed, visual. You can detect uh, some non-desired behavior, behavior of your employees' parts uh, easier. Sort of red flag reporting uh, systems. So, and of course, other other systems as well. But uh, moving on uh, to structure. Uh, you might need to add new uh, units or positions in order to boost growth and innovation, because it's not that easy to tell the people that, okay, you do your daily work, but in addition to that, you need to innovate now. So you most likely will need to add new people who are really dedicated to that part. On the other hand, you can remove certain positions or, uh, or even units, the ones that are replaced by automation. And uh, well, doesn't mean that you have to lay off these people. You can maybe reassign some new tasks to them that are more value-added. So in general, it's uh, it's about creating higher value-added uh, jobs and removing lower-added ones. The organizations in general might become uh, flatter, so meaning faster decision, and you could reduce the management costs, especially on the part of uh, middle management. So key take takeaway from all of this, uh, digital transformation is not that easy. It's much more complex than just investing into some digital technologies. You really need to fully remake your organization so that you can really get the maximum benefits uh, out of it. And uh, Stenka will now discuss how to really start off with this project and uh, how to get moving. Okay, thanks. Well, uh, good afternoon, dear listeners and participants. Uh, thank you, uh, Pirko and Rainer, for uh, the overview and the introduction in the topic. Uh, and so I would like to continue with uh, the idea how to uh, start with the digital transformation in the companies. So how to prepare our or your organization for digital transformation how to get started with the process, with the process, uh, who are the key drivers, uh, what is important to deal with. So they are the main questions uh, which I would like to touch in the uh, next uh, few minutes. Uh, so, so we have heard uh, the new digital era, constantly changing uh, technologies, empower new ways how to approach customers, uh, and enable business processes to be more efficient and uh, make the connections between the people, devices, and uh, uh, data as well more efficient. So the uh, digital transformation uh, actually requires uh, a holistic uh, approach, as we have heard, uh, and takes into account uh, technology processes and above for all the people. And uh, actually, the people are those uh, uh, and the processes connected uh, with the people in the companies. Uh, as the main topic, uh, I would like to uh, go a little bit uh, deeper. So, um, actually, the people are the uh, biggest uh, driver of uh, digital transformation. Uh, the employees with the right skill sets uh, will trigger the transformation and keep uh, uh, this process uh, rolling. Uh, and the new business processes uh, go digital. Uh, so actually, I've uh, based um, 
at a short presentation on not just uh, the results of uh, our contacts and information from the companies we talked with uh, during our work, and as well of the other surveys who dealt with the digital transformation. So, and I have found as well the solid base for the start and why to start with the uh, employees uh, and the change of uh, organizational culture as a first. So, as you can see from uh, the graph from the chart, uh, uh, from uh, the data uh, conducted by a travel consultancy in the year 2018, uh, uh, the data were collected by the companies that, that uh, underwent the path of digital transformation already, and uh, 74% of uh, the respondents perceived uh, that the culture and organizational change uh, was more harder and more difficult uh, uh, for them than the technological part. Um, so, uh, we can see then that uh, organizational culture is one of the biggest hardest in the journey of uh, becoming digital. Uh, on the path uh, to digital maturity uh, is a really important uh, role of uh, the change of uh, the organizational culture content. Um, why it's uh, so important uh, to consider and maybe to start uh, with the thinking about the culture content uh, if uh, it is uh, uh, in compliance, if uh, it complies with the digital strategy, uh, and uh, if not, uh, why to start to change it. Uh, actually, as we know, organizational culture uh, represented uh, the uh, philosophy, experience of the company, and uh, there are the values uh, which are shared among uh, all in the company, and uh, which guide the behavior and are reflected uh, in the expressions, rituals, interactions, uh, um, and uh, as well all the artifacts and productions uh, of the companies uh, which uh, show inside uh, and as well outside uh, who we are uh, as a company. So simply that uh, uh, organizational culture can be seen as the way how the things are done around here in our company. And uh, to be successful in the digital era, uh, so the ability of our company uh, it depends on how we are able to implement the new uh, cultural content uh, that uh, supports innovative uh, usage uh, of digital technologies and hand in hand. Uh, so we rethink the strategy and the uh, leadership. Uh, as soon as uh, you can, you would like to start transform the content of your organizational culture. Um, the better for to be nature and to be digital. So. Be the question, the crucial question here is uh, what exactly the digital culture uh, is, how we shall understand it. The content of the culture uh, can be defined or described by its elements or dimensions. Uh, on the picture on the bottom, uh, you can see that uh, one example uh, for um, digital culture content. Uh, uh, as represented uh, by seven dimensions. Uh, in the center, and uh, as well, we heard it already by the Virgo's uh, presentation, uh, as the employee, uh, who actually is the holder and the bearer and as well the transmitter of uh, the culture uh, to the outside world of uh, our company. So let's uh, 
have a look at what are these uh, particular dimensions to uh, what uh, uh, shall the employees uh, uh, share uh, this uh, of all the orientation on the customer. So our employees uh, should uh, understand uh, uh, the customers uh, and uh, their uh, digital expectations. And they have to be able to transform it uh, uh, into the appropriate uh, uh, actions uh, uh, to uh, solve, to deal with uh, the problems uh, of our digital customers. Uh, the second dimension is uh, innovation. So the behavior, the thinking uh, uh, of our employees uh, uh, should uh, be open, risk-taking, uh, disruptive, uh, uh, and uh, there should be above all uh, open for new ideas, to create a new path, uh, new solutions. So here we are starting to think as well, and speaking as well, about uh, the creating uh, the content of the right uh, or digital mindset as a part of uh, one of the elements of uh, the digital culture. The next uh, uh, element or dimension are the data. So the data-driven decision-making, uh, we have heard that uh, important uh, parts of the digital transformation are the work with the data to know, not just to collect the data, however, to know and our employees should know how to work with the data uh, in uh, the uh, uh, appropriate uh, and efficient way uh, for doing a better decisions. Uh, the next dimension is the collaboration. And the collaboration between the people uh, is important uh, because uh, to uh, uh, sharing it means uh, uh, exchanging, uh, exchanging information uh, and to cooperate uh, uh, when uh, it is needed uh, for uh, dealing with the problems of our consumers and as well inside uh, uh, companies' issues. Um, next dimension, as you can see, is openness of culture. Uh, it is uh, uh, in connections with the openness uh, of the mind, openness uh, uh, of um, for the new ideas, uh, openness uh, for the ideas of uh, our uh, partners, uh, or the stakeholders, uh, vendors, uh, all those uh, uh, who uh, can be um, uh, participants of the decision-making process, of the dealing with the problems uh, inside of the company. Uh, now we come to the digital first mindset, as it's called uh, uh, by this uh, uh, typology. Uh, so this uh, means uh, actually that the people, uh, the employees uh, are open for adopting the solutions uh, and uh, they are already uh, set uh, or are in this kind of mode. Uh, the last but not least, uh, uh, already uh, you can read it uh, behind uh, beyond the lines as well by the other dimensions is the agility and flexibility uh, of uh, our employees and uh, the culture uh, because all the processes are speed up nowadays and uh, if uh, the companies, the business uh, can or would like to be competitive uh, then it, uh, uh, the organization should be able uh, to reflect uh, to uh, these um, um, to these incentives for uh, to these incentives uh, for the from the external world. Uh, so, um, so because of the time, I will speed up as well my presentation. So, uh, just uh, wanted to mention that uh, the transformation of the culture uh, of uh, is uh, a very difficult and uh, long uh, run. Uh, uh, or long distance uh, run. And uh, for this, uh, you need uh, all the managers and the leaders. So they uh, process uh, 
very important role uh, in this uh, change uh, with uh, uh, their ability uh, of uh, seeing uh, the problems uh, in the holistic approach uh, and uh, uh, the uh, main characteristics uh, uh, which will help them uh, in the digitized environment. Uh, this, as well, uh, already mentioned uh, the uh, data, uh, understanding the data and understanding how to analyze them and uh, uh, on the this space uh, make uh, the decisions. Uh, however, uh, the um, environment uh, and uh, above all the work with the people is very important. Uh, at the bottom of uh, the slide you can see uh, the uh, five uh, personas or types uh, uh, of uh, digital leaders uh, which were uh, designed on the dimensions how the people work uh, uh, with uh, uh, their co-workers, uh, with the tasks uh, uh, and, uh, and the business in which they operate. So they were invented or um, identified uh, six uh, possible approaches or six uh, typical uh, leadership styles. Uh, the first one's uh, adventure, then ambassador, clarifier, educator, attractor, and uh, cartographer. Uh, the the leaders of the future should be adventurous, uh, so they should uh, uh, be in front and the first uh, nine when they see uh, the um, um, the incentive for when uh, they see uh, the and they are uh, visionaries, uh, so they come with the uh, courage uh, and uh, faith, uh, uh, new and maybe sometimes uncertain situations. The ambassadors uh, should be able to bring the others along the journey. The clarifiers, uh, they should be able to explain uh, it uh, in a very clear uh, way to the uh, other people in the company. And uh, educator it means uh, they should be able to train, educate people on the way and make as well in the uh, environment attractive uh, for the people who are in the company. And uh, cartographer, uh, that's uh, the type of the person uh, who can visualize, because nowadays, uh, as you know, the uh, visual um, perspective or viewing of the people uh, is uh, first uh, a step for understanding the problems more deeper. Uh, work with the people to know maybe what kind of uh, uh, characters uh, uh, or um, features uh, uh, can be helpful for the digital era is very important. However, uh, in the companies, when we are speaking about people, it's important as well to prepare for them the new environment, uh, so called the digital workplaces. Uh, uh, these uh, workplaces actually should, uh, uh, should enable all these expectations we got uh, towards our employees. Uh, so above all, we expect that uh, our employees are more engaged, they are cooperative, uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, uh, the workplaces are more cost effective. So how the workplace uh, should look like in a, a very a short way, uh, the um, the workplace uh, uh, should uh, be mobile and flexible. So it doesn't matter uh, from which place our employees uh, will work. Uh, very often, the tools for it, uh, you know, are the shared platforms, home offices, or as well some kind of principles. You know, as a bring your own device into the workplace. So that's the first symbol, then the people, um, uh, the, um, it means that the social cooperation uh, through the intranets uh, and the shared, uh, shared uh, spaces are needed for exchanging the, and sharing the information. So, uh, then the key clear structure of uh, the work processes, uh, uh, the uh, then afterwards, the data integration, so the digital workplace uh, should be uh, 
with the central information a place or space available for uh, all employees uh, and uh, the work with the data should be convenient uh, for all of them. So uh, just uh, to, if you allow me to conclude uh, the presentation, then I will, yeah, uh, I just uh, wanted to tell that the new technologies can bring the significant new value for organizations. However, without the people, uh, the potential wouldn't be uh, achieved uh, by the companies. Thank you very much. And now I give the word uh, to Veronica. Thank you for your attention. So thank you for all presenters. And dear participants, you can already start to type your questions if you have. And just short conclusion from my side. So really, to conclude with digital transformation is inevitable. And question is, are you ready for the digital future? So if you are one of those organizations who just plan to implement a particular new technology or a specific new platform, or if you are already in the middle of MAC and disjointed digital transformation, you need to reframe your journey because digital transformation is not an action or event, is a journey. And even more than a journey is a corporate mindset. And to successfully adopt a digital transformation, your organization must have a holistic approach. You need to redesign your strategy, processes, culture, structure, everything to be aligned with digital process. And we hope that we provide you some needed information to make your digital journey more successful. And you can find more information under our toolbox on our website. For example, you can answer a short questionnaire and find out where your organization stands on its digital journey at the moment and what can you do to improve your situation. So thank you a lot. And please, now it's time for questions, so you can type your questions. Yes, thank you, Laura. First question is, uh, what if employees think that ticketing processes will take their job away? 